एवरी वन गुड इवनिंग हेलो एवरी वन वी हैव सो मच टू डू टूडे राइट सो मी एंड ऐश्वर्य मैम आर थिंकिंग दैट यू नो आई होप दैट वी आर वी शुड नॉट बी सम अन यू नो फॉरगेटेबल सोल वी आर नॉट द गोस एवरी वन येस we are still very al- we are alive and we are very active also really sorry that we were not there with you for a long time but here we are everyone and yeah we can do lot of things ta da da you can guess what had happened something to do with the color and something to do with the magic of technology So good evening, everyone, and welcome to six, seven, and eight, the ninth and tenth channel of Byju's. I hope that you remember me, especially to six, seven, and eight channel. I'm your teacher Ankita, and we'll be calling Ashwarya Ma'am also. A ninth and tenth. Hello, everyone. Good evening. You were meeting us a little bit very frequently for the past two weeks, and we are happy. Yes, let's now call Ashwarya Ma'am and Shara Ma'am. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Good evening. So we wanted to, as they get us back to normal, we wanted to do a very uh, grand and memorable entry, something that you would remember us for a very long time, right? So now, of course, you will always remember how Ankita Ma'am popped up out of the screen like that, and how she came, and how her hands were there. Yes, all magic of technology. But we wanted to do some me- memorable thing. So we were like, "Ma'am, dar lag gaya." How is it as biology students we keep seeing different parts of the body and as a matter of fact it was pretty jaw dropping right when you saw Ankita ma'am like that which is why Ankita ma'am and I are here today to talk about 10 jaw dropping biology facts so that was our intent all the time now as you all know right as they make us small and get us all adjusted adjusted here, here. So mainly, let us tell you that we are live on both the channels. We are live on both six to eight as well as nine and ten. So this is across grade. Yes. And ma'am, very simple class today. We are going to tell them some things that they know, some things that they don't know as well, right? Yes. So everyone, welcome to the class. And as ma'am told, we will be discussing something about uh, about, of course, about our biology, and that's something really very interesting. So everyone, get ready. This class is a very small Sweden class. We'll be just quickly discussing some of the important facts, right, ma'am? Yes. So, ma'am, let's get started. Yes, we'll get started very quickly. But everybody, before we get started, for all of you out there, now for those of you who know us and who've been very regular on the channel, of course, they know that we do crazy things. But now, if you're very new to our class and probably the first time you're thinking, who are these two teachers? What are they doing? Why have they come without? only hands and head right yeah. and now is one more teacher coming in with all this i will say energy and enthusiasm yeah. <laughs> so who are we we are mainly your biology teachers we teach you biology we also teach you social sciences as well and today we will be making sure that throughout the next few weeks we will give them a lot of learn help them learn a lot of new things yes so like i know that your examinations are almost over right and of course maybe here and there few examinations are there but we will make sure that we are helping you with that apart from that we will be entering into the new sessions right and into the new academic sessions so before that right we will have some interesting sessions that will be helping us to get ready for our next class so everyone with that i hope that all of you are super excited super super excited please make sure if you're new here on the channel as ma'am mentioned if you don't know who are we my name is ankita ma'am name is ashwarya and if you want to stay with us please make sure you hit the subscribe button join our classes because this is just the small small hint that what we'll be doing in the next academic year we have so much amazing stuff planned for them right ma'am yes of course so everybody please make sure that you are ready short and sweet class in half an hour we are going to learn about 10 jaw dropping biology facts now before we get started how many of you love biology right how many of you love learning about the human body especially yes. everybody quick raise of hands in the live chat and for those of you who are watching this video much later i am sure that you tapped upon this video and you opened this video only because you love learning about biology yes. right so somebody is like most of them are like mom me many of them are like mom no okay it's okay me 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 biology is biology is an emotion i'm with you Yes definitely everyone 
Awesome. Now, some of you are saying we love physics. It's okay. We know you love biology also. Yeah. Right. So now, of course, everybody, if you have your love for biology, right? Biology is all about discovering, ma'am. It's yes. not about inventing here. Rather, I mean, there is invention as well, but there's a lot of discovery as yeah. well. Because if you, now if you look at the around us, around us throughout, and not just the humans inside our body, but outside, we have so many living organisms, and of course, we just barely know them. Still, the discoveries are happening. Yeah. Still, every day, I think not every day, every year, we come up with amazing research about the human body, how it works, how it functions. So, it's every day is a new day, right, ma'am? Yes. So, so here we are, so that we can inspire you, or you know, we can add some light, so that your love for biology should continue forever and ever. So, let's get started. Yes. So now. How many of you? We'll start fact number one, ma'am, but with a very popular question, right? Yeah. Something that we love doing. I know that I can say that with confidence. <laughs> How many of you love sleeping? Raise your hand, everyone. Yes. How many of you enjoy sleeping, ma'am? Sunday, especially Sundays are the days where you want to sleep in late, right? Because sometimes Saturday you might have school as well, right? How many of you love having Sunday time? I say full time sleeping. Not just Sunday, ma'am. I guess. <laughs> Whenever you get time, you're like, "Ha, ah, let's sleep." Yes. A lot of you are saying, "Mom, Friday, me, me, me." Oh my God! Everybody is now very excited, saying, "Mom, we love sleeping." Do you know what is the average duration we should sleep? Now there are days when we end up sleeping for ten hours, eleven yeah. hours. You know, we're just feeling very lazy. But how much time should you ideally sleep? What do you think? Not sleeping, but a power nap. Okay, very good. Very good, very good. Maths ka road map, you will have it. You will get it. Don't worry. It's already there on the channel, I think. Yeah, I think there were some changes, but now it will be posted again. I think yes. it was posted again. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I can see seven hours, eight hours, ma'am. What do you think? Nine to eleven hours. I like that. Very good. <laughs> eight to ten is a constant. Majorly, I think they're saying, ma'am, six to seven or to seven to eight hours. Yes. So you know that ideally humans sleep for six to eight hours. Anything more than eight hours is when we are being lazy. Yeah. Ma'am, do you agree to this? Yes, definitely, everyone. So this is an ideal time for us to sleep. Now, as of course, this one thing that you know, uh, for younger, when we are younger, we sleep for eight hours, right? We need that rest. Our body needs that repair. But of course, I'm sure as we get older and older, we will not get that enough sleep. That is also one thing. But when we are discussing about the sleep. If I give you an option of sleeping, let's suppose uh, 24 hours, ma'am. What do you think? Do you think we'll be able to sleep for 24 hours without doing anything? As much as we want to, right? As much as we want to. Like I mean, there have been days. I'll be very honest. When maybe like you know, it's a holiday, like it's a Sunday, or you know, I I like maybe if I'm on leave or something like that. I'll be on the bed, but of course, as you all know, we'll not sleep throughout, yeah. right? There's going to be periods of time when you are awake. You do walk around a little. We cannot yeah. be on bed as humans, right? Yes. Most of us. I mean, ma'am, can you sleep 24 hours a day? No, I can't sleep eight hours also. <laughs> I'm like, ha ha ha, chalo chalo, jaldi. Yeah, ma'am is a morning person. She's yeah. very excited in the morning. So yeah, that is there. So but let, let's see, ma'am. We have some. So this is about humans, right? And we have something very very special, ma'am. What we have? Ma'am, do you? The question actually is: Do you think animals sleep? Because we have a concept of sleep, huh. right? What about animals? I mean, of course, dogs, cats. We have pets as yeah, well. Yeah, yes, All of us have pets. pets at home. Or if you have a pet at home, you can tell, right? The way they sleep. It's going to be very different, right? Somebody telling mom, I'm an owl. That means they're not sleeping properly. Oh, oh. yeah. Basically, we always say, ma'am, we are a night owl. Basically, babe, we are a people who stay late in the night. Yes, 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 yes. They do. Yeah, they do. Yeah, if you haven't pet animal at home, I'm sure you have seen. You would have seen sleeping. Yes. So there are some interesting facts about some animals, like bats. Oh, little brown bats. Can you see? They look very cute. I don't know if you have seen the real picture of bat. Bat. At least from a distance, they look very cute. And when they close come, they yeah, they can tell it. <laughs> But they're still very cute. They're very amazing animals. They play a very important role in our ecosystem. So yeah, lots of love to them. But they can actually sleep up to twenty point five hours. Super lazy, I guess, right? So mm -hmm. see, they are saying, "Mom, super lazy bats." <laughs> Everybody is saying, "Mom, bats have so much time to sleep." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't have to. They don't have to go to school. They don't have to study. They don't have to learn about biology. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they are just sleeping. But another very interesting thing is there are some animals. Actually, ma'am, a lot of them are telling when you said no, ma'am. 
are there can we sleep 24 hours a day they said no, no but they were talking about some other animals which have the ability to sleep for longer times and one such example is that of the snail right ma'am oh okay like can you believe that snail can sleep or i would say that they can actually hibernate for approximately 3 years so that means that they are not doing much of the activities right ma'am yeah they're just there static exactly so they have it's almost like they go into like a dormant state hmm. and now we have this idea of hibernation and estivation right and we know what is hibernation estivation yes one is winter sleep and one is yeah. summer sleep and it's not just in snails that we see but we see in so many other animals also they go into a dormant state especially when conditions become very extreme yes you can uh, tell one example i can see i think on 6 7 8 one or two of you have mentioned about it polar region yes polar bear right very good right so polar bear goes there of course we have our favorite lizards also right during winters you will not see them but in the summer time and they'll be coming from yeah. everywhere so these are all some examples and as a matter of fact when you talk about snails as well like ma'am said ma'am gave you some examples right of how there are some which do only hibernation yes. some which only do estivation right ma'am and normally it's with respect to the temperature that is there yes but we have such interesting creature land snail they actually sleep up to 3 hours in both right so that's very good a very interesting information this information was kind of new to us also yeah you we like oh 3 hours right A good uh, amount of time. Exactly, and the thing is, in summer, right? So snails have shells, which is a very you know characteristic thing about them. When you think about snail, you think about their shell. Now in winter, what they do is they actually go inside their shell and they hide. Yes. But when in summer they actually don't do that, they remain outside itself because the shell actually will reflect the sunlight, and most of their body remains protected in this manner. So this is one extra fun fact for all of you. Okay. Now, ma'am, with this, I think we'll move on to fact two. Yes, fact two. I'm sure it will be very interesting. Okay, everyone. I think all of us nowadays are a master because we have so much of technology and yes. we learn so much day by day. So here, let's talk about the fact number two. But before that, uh, can you share these smileys, right, ma'am? Let's just yes. ask them. Yes. Right. In the chat, everyone, do share uh, these smileys of different. Uh, let's say, most ma'am, we'll tell them the emotions. Yes. And we will also try our best to have that emotion on our face. So now you have so many in emojis that are there. So yeah. we will try to do that, right? So everybody is yes. already ma'am sending the happy smiley one. So ee. Then there's one with the peace. Yeah, peace. Uh, yeah. But uh, that should be like very static face, like not. Okay. Now you can send us some more angry one. I can see. Not exactly angry. Yeah, we can't be angry around yeah, each other. Yeah, we we can't be because yeah. we have tried it a lot. Like in the during the poses, also we'll be like. Mm, yeah, that's why you only see us power posing our way through. It's because we can't see. <laughs> because we can't see at each other, and then we're like. Mm, see, yeah, we, we can't, can't be that. angry. <laughs> um, we can do suspicious, right? Mom, suspicious is easy. We done that. Yeah, suspicious is very. Easy. Unexp- yeah, yeah, but we'll like, still laugh. We can send hearts. Yeah. Ha ha. Hearts. hearts. Like this one, ma'am. This one. Oh one. yeah, this one. This one. Ha. Mine is not proper, but this one. Ha. Tara. Now there's. Oh, you guys are sending. See, there are some emojis which we can't. That stone face Haan, and all. Stone. We can't make. Can't. How we'll make that face? Ah, uh, we can have some sad face. Ha. The thinking one we already did. Ah, uh, sad face, ma'am. Oh, they are doing dabbles. Dabbles. Dabbles, but it's not a. Like, we'll not be able to see the expression. Yes. Ah, uh, sad is easy. Like disappointed. Yes. Can you see us as how disappointed we look? Oh how do I don't know yeah. how to be disappointed. <laughs> yeah, like mm. it comes in the flow. Yes. So basically, what is the reason why we told you all of this? Is because of this very reason. Yes, that humans, right? Like us, we are the humans and we can actually create up to up now 7000 different expression all together. Now of course this number can go up and down. Yeah. In different 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 places we have different information. But that's why we're saying approximately this much, right? Yeah. Just imagine how many different expression as an individual we can give. Just yeah. Just think. Yeah. If somebody is like, what the how? What the what the heck? Like, is it really yeah, possible? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we were also quite surprised. As a matter of fact, it goes up to ten thousand expressions as yeah. well. And but the thing is, like what Ma'am said, you no know, smiling, angry, sadness, fear, maybe contempt. These are all some yeah. basic expressions which are there. Which is why, Ma'am, when you look at the emojis, right? Most yeah. often they're not more and more emojis keep coming in because those are all the different expressions, non-verbal forms of communications that we have. Yes. 
So if I just look at mom and mom is smiling, I know she's happy. And during our call, during the sessions also, we have a look at each other and we know what the other person is thinking. So, so we have a lot of expression that actually help us to communicate with the outer world. And if you are a student of the drama, right, if you are a active participation, if you play plays and other things, you will learn that there are more and more expression there. Yeah. And that's how, you know, um, they actually allow you to have those expressions. So yeah, it's, it's not very easy to do that. But yeah, as a human, we do that on a very regular basis, but we never realize that what expression we are actually giving. So next time, everyone, I think that could be a homework for you. Yes. If you don't have anything, tonight, stand in front of the mirror and try other expressions. Exactly. And as a matter of fact, it makes you more expressive as a person, right? Now, the reason why when you're in class and you know maybe the teacher is angry or when the teacher is, you know, very happy, it's because you're able to detect all of these things. So try it out. You can try it out now also, right? See, this is a very simple class like we already told you, which is giving you some interesting facts, not very heavy, right? So now, of course, moving on with this to fact number three. Oh, fact number three looks easy. Yes, fact number three is a very easy peasy fact. It's a very scientific fact. It's very yes. bio bio wala fact. Okay, now what we would want you all to do is, we know a lot of girls and boys are here, right? All the girls use, uh, I'm going to use some neutral colors, right? All girls use purple color hearts and send it on the chat. All the boys that are here use green color hearts, right? Yes. To tell that you are boy or girl, right? So we have gender, right? Boy and girl. That's how we identify individuals. So everybody send us a lot of hearts. Is it purple or green? See, I'm not using the cliche pink and pink blue. And yeah. huh, so I'm going with purple and green. Purple, purple. Oh, so Many purples. Feel proud? Yes. Yeah, so many. Oh, now some greens are coming. More purples and greens. You see a lot of green in 9 and 10, a yeah. lot of purple in 6 to 8. Yes. Awesome, everyone. Very good, very good. Keep it going, everybody. Keep it going. Now, as you are doing this, I hope all of you are hitting on the like button also. <laughs> yeah, please make sure you hit the like button, everyone. Yeah, we forgot about that. And subscribe. Yes. Okay, so we know that a lot of boys and a lot of... Basically, ma'am, when we talk about individuals. Yes. At birth, we are categorized as boy and girl. Yeah. And we call this as... Sex determination, everyone. So, this is a very important topic. Ninth class, the new in the 10th class will be learning this. And 8th class, ma'am. They have an understanding about it in ninth yeah. class also. So the gender of the humans, right? We uh, in the humans, we actually understand of that get decided by the chromosomes. So we say that in females, we have X and X chromosome. X chromosome stands for basically we have it in the female and the egg is the gamete or the germ cell. So the egg will have the X chromosome. In male, what they have? They have the sperm. So the sperm can either have the X or can have the Y. And based upon that, the gender will be decided. If it's X and X, it will be a girl. And if it's X and Y, it's a boy. So we can say that the sex determination in humans is very easy, right, ma'am? Yes. It's based upon the chromosome. Exactly. So XX or XY. Exactly. So it's chromosomes or it's the genetic material. Now the thing is... Not all organisms have this kind of a mechanism, right? Now, there are some animals where it's not decided actually per se with the help. Now, yes. it's not, I'll not say genetic material at all, okay? Genetic no. material it's is there. involved. But it's not this X, X and X, Y which ma'am explained, right? It's something else, yeah. right ma'am? It's the temperature, everyone. Yes, I'm sure you would have studied it somewhere or the other or maybe you would have heard it. If not, now is the time to look at this interesting, amazing information. So in around, uh, we have different types of reptiles, especially if you talk about, right? So what happens, their gender is decided by the temperature. So they will be laying the eggs, right? Based upon the temperature that they get, if they are in a warmer temperature, or the mother is sitting there and providing the body heat, 
excessively. So, of course, the temperature will increase. From that, we'll have more of female. And yes. the opposite of that, ma'am, will be males. So, around 31 degrees, right? Above 31 degrees, every egg will become a female. But if it's below 20, I mean, around below that range, right? So, around 28 degrees, around that time, it's going to be males. So, here, sex determination happens through temperature. temperature. So, like ma'am said, it's mainly in reptiles. So, I'm sure, see, a lot of 9 standard, 9th and below, everybody is impressed. 10 standard children, ma'am. Yeah, we know this. We know this. Yeah. We, we studied this. But others, you have an edge over. So when you come in 10 standard and when they tell you this, you're like, Are, Ankita Baba and I should have already told us this. This is nothing new. <laughs> yes. Ma'am, uh, interesting question. Does ske oh, sorry, snake, I'm, snake, I'm saying. Yes, they do have skeleton. Yeah, when I was also a kid, I used to believe that snake does not have skeleton. They're like, huh, they're a flexible body. They're just muscle. But snake do have skeleton. Yes. And their vertebral column is very flexible. That's why they're yeah. able to, you know, slither like that and go. So they actually do have that. Why not in humans? Humans, what are you saying? Why not in humans? We have skeleton. Yes, yeah, of yeah. course we do. But I think you're asking why not temperature dependency in humans? Huh. Because we have the concept of sex chromosomes, which is why that is the case. Yes, very good. Now, ma'am, we will move on to fact number four, right? Oh, this is something very interesting, I guess. Yes. So now we're going to So, were you all able to hear this? Baby is crying. Yes. Oh my God, mom, I'm going to cry. Very cute baby. Yes, very cute baby actually. Okay. So, now of course, right? How many of you, I'm sure most of you, would have seen small babies, right? Maybe under a year or six months, you would have seen babies would be crying, right? Most often they're not babies. They can't really talk, but they cry. Now, right. the thing is, mom, I'm sure many of them would... How many of you would have noticed this? Ma'am, you can ask them, right? Yeah. How many of you have noticed that there are... When they cry, right? Yeah, they usually cry without the tears. Now, can you tell us a reason? Now, of course, there's a biology over here. What could be the reason that they're crying but there are no tears? Yeah, we... Sometimes we call... See, if our adult is crying and there are no tears, we call them crocodile tears. Yeah. Yeah, we call them as like, ha, huh, no, don't be a crocodile. <laughs> You're crying, but you, there are no tree, tears. But over here, in humans, especially when we are developing, right, we have special glands, right? So we have, we have a tear gland. So they are not developed at that particular time. And they'll develop gradually when, of course, our growth is happening. That is the reason, right, ma'am? Yes. And now another thing is a lot of you are saying, ma'am, they keep crying a lot, right? <laughs> now, see, when we cry, of course, yes. over time, right, our our response, so as we grow older and as we develop as children and as where all of you are, you're getting a, your brain is also developing at this point, which means you are getting a more sense of understanding about your surroundings, right? There are things that inflict or that cause pain to you, right? So when there is pain or when we feel that, right, our response to it in some cases is to cry it out, right? When we feel bad, when we feel sad or when there's pain, yes, sometimes there are some people who even though they want to cry, they may not, you know, cry it out as well. Yeah. But over time, that's when we cry, right? That with multiple reasons, of course. But for babies, they don't cry because they are sad, right? Not like us. If I'm sad right now, I may cry. But the thing is for babies, that's their way of communicating because they can't speak. And they have different cries also, right? Yeah. Different ways in which they try to communicate to say that they are hungry or they are happy. So sometimes even when they're happy, like they try to make sounds, sounds and everything yes. just to tell that, you know, that's their way of communicating as well. Yeah, and if you have a, a smaller baby around you, I'm sure you, you would have seen, they will be like making weird, not weird, according to them, there's a very good language they are speaking. But yeah, we might not understand that, that language, but they're trying to communicate with us. So of course, if you pay attention, there are different types of cries altogether and different sounds that comes. So if some, if usually the mother and the father can easily identify what a baby needs. So that's how, you know, that's how the communication happens. And there's one more thing, right? Interesting, ma'am, that, you know, the babies don't have the vision. They, the vision of the babies initially is very blurred. So they actually have a very strong nose and they can sense mm. their mother. That's why if you just hold, if the, if the mother is holding the baby, they'll be happy. The moment the baby is 
given to someone else or it's on the bed the baby will start crying yeah interesting ma many of them are saying why is it that when babies are born they cry the first thing that they do when the baby is born they cry mm. now the thing is see interesting when the baby is born and is out in the world see so long the baby is inside the mother's body right which means nutrition most importantly oxygen right is coming from within the mother's body yes but when the baby is born and the lungs are you know basically it's out in the air the lungs start to work right yeah. and when the body starts to function properly as a result of it they cry which is why when the baby cries it's the good sign yes that that actually show, shows that the baby is active and the body is working properly so when they cry of course their mouth is open i'm sure you have not seen a baby who's crying without their mouth closed so basically the air is moving and that's how the lungs will actually start functioning so all of these interesting thing that we have in our human body and see from 6 to 8 see we all have been into that phase just remember that <laughs> it's amazing that how our body works yeah So okay. now, of course, we will move on to fact number five. See, we are not ignoring some people. See, yeah. somebody, somebody is asking me, "What is the motive of this session?" This motive is very simple: to learn some facts. Very light session. Ninth and tenth have board exams going on. Very heavy, heavy classes coming your way. So, if at all you are in ninth, going to tenth, it's just for you to, you know, breeze in a little bit, right? And for six to eight, nobody, we are not ignoring you. Chat is moving quite fast, which is why, you know, we are. not able yeah. to take up the comments now a very very amazing fact that we're going to tell you now is like mom said right all even the babies are born their visions are a little blur Blurry right days. it takes time to you know get fine and of course over time our vision becomes really good right it's almost like hd ultra wow. vision but of course if you don't take care of it then sometimes we may have short sightedness long sightedness like us right <laughs> <laughs> both of us have short sightedness <laughs> So now, of course, I mean, I'm, I'm going to take a wild guess that Ankita Ma'am also has spectacles of watching too much TV. Yeah, I would say that. Yes, even even me. <laughs> yeah, I was in my class tenth when I got my specs. Yeah, I was in class five when I got my spectacles. Yes. So <laughs> coming back, we know that we're able to see things around you because of the eyes. Ma'am, what is the shape of the eyes? Why don't we ask the kids? What is the ah. shape of the eye? Because everybody will tell this is the shape of the eye. Yeah. Look at the shape, right? And then look at the eyeball. There are two different things. Shape of an eye and shape of an eyeball is different aspect. We are trying to, you know, mentioning over there. Yeah. You're seeing, guys, ma'am. Look at this. Thank you, blue skies, ma'am. I think they're telling it to you because I'm wearing specs. My eyes are not visible. <laughs> <laughs> What is the shape of the eyeball? Streamline. Okay, it's like a streamline. Spear. Yeah. Very good. Curved shape. Spear. Circle. See, we gave you the clue by telling you it is. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, we gave you a very big clue. So we can see it over Someone here. Someone is telling circle. See 3D, 3D. Go, don't do 2D, 3D. Papi has now moved to ninth and tenth. Welcome. <laughs> I finally got there in class ninth. No, you were there in class eight last year. Yeah. No idea. Who's there? Okay, no idea. Oh, it's sad. No, not sad actually, but it's sad that we can't uh, give them the hint properly, right, ma'am? We should give them more hint. No, but I think most of them have got the yes. answer. Yeah, see, this is the shape of the eye, which is teardrop-like. Somebody's telling streamlined. There were lots of you into biology. Someone's saying leaf-like, almond-like also. Almond. Oh, actually, yeah, alm almond shape is a type of eye, right? Yeah, almond shape is a type of eye. So actually, very good. But since eyeball, it is spherical. Now the thing is, we have something called as uh, peripheral vision, right? So, for example, if I'm standing like this and I want to see Ankita Bam and Ankita Bam wants to see me, I don't need to turn my head, no? Yeah. I can just look at her like this. Yes. So, ma'am, you should not turn your head. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> But you, you turn your head. Oh, little bit. Okay. Yeah. I can see Ankita Bam like this. Little yeah. bit at least. At least we know that we have a next person who is coming yeah. next, next to us, right? And that would happen, right? For example, if you're writing something on the board, you will focus on the sentence, but you can still see the above and the below line, right? You can still see the lines that are there. So of course, we have this amazing vision. We have focused vision, and of course, with the peripheral vision. Yes. Now we can do that, but there are few amazing animals with a very, very great vision, ma'am. Right, ma'am? Yes. Ooh. So these are beautiful animals. We have owls, right? So we know that owls, of course, have very good vision. But what is the most fascinating thing about the owl? Can you tell us what is it? What is the most fascinating thing about the owl? Apart from that, they can rotate their neck three sixty degree. Okay. 
Ma'am gave the answer. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. The other fact was right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. So, ma'am being the leucosaurus she is, <laughs> has given the answer. That we know that owls have the ability to turn their heads and it's a movement like this, right? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah I love the movement. Like they will yeah. do like this. <laughs> please don't. Please don't make this into a... <laughs> no. Yeah. Yes, everyone. We're not giving you any ideas. Yes. Now the thing is, if you see, right, owls actually don't have spherical eyes. They actually have tubular eyes, right? Or cylindrical eyes, we yeah. could say. Which is why they don't have that ability of peripheral vision that we do. But instead they need to turn their head entirely. An owl will never look like this. An owl will always have to turn, turn and see what is there. Yes. So as you all know ma'am, I think we can roughly draw and show, yes, right? ma'am. You are there with us. So, <laughs> draw. so our eyeball will look something like this, okay? I hope I'm drawing this fine. Yes. Yes, yeah. Our eyeball is going to look something like this without the details. But if you look at theirs, right, it will look something, it looks like a fungi. So it looks something like this. They no? had a, they had a little bit cony side yeah. at the back and of course the front. So it's not, it's not exactly the one that we have in our eyes, right? Yeah. So they have, and they cannot move their eyeball basically. In, yeah. In a, in a layman language, if you have to say, they cannot move their eyeball. So that's why they just turn around and that's the power they have. They can actually turn around back also. Yeah. Scary owl, yeah. And a very cute owl also. Actually, this owl is very cute. Very, they look very cute. If you, I hope that you have seen their babies. Owl babies. So cute. Even the Harry Potter owl is very cute. Hedwig is very cute. Yes. Yes, but we also know that there are owls, of course, we all know from Harry Potter. If you've all been reading Harry Potter, watching Harry Potter movies, I'm sure you'd be able to know that, right? Snow owl, yes, you can say, but of course, species-wise, we're not going into the details. Now, moving on to fact number six. Okay, this is interesting, right? This is very, very interesting. So, if we have to ask, oh, um, I was about to ask you who will be our ancestor. Oh, but it's okay. <laughs> You can so, still ask, ma'am. <laughs> okay. If, uh, can you tell us who are our ancestors? Yes. I know, it will be an interesting question because I think the, the common answer is like, who do you think is our ancestors, right? From where we evolved. Nobody is getting ignored, Apoor. But I hope that by calling out your name, you feel that you are not being ignored. That should not be the case. Yes. Monkey, monkey, monkey. Okay. Godzilla. Sorry, Godzilla. <laughs> Trupti yes. giving heavily technical terms. Okay. <laughs> yes. Hmm. Somebody is telling ma'am closest is chimpanzee. Chimpanzees. Very good. Yes. So it's not technically monkeys. Right. Yeah. Primates. Okay fine. You can give the answer. Right. But actually the closest that we have is chimpanzee. Yes. So everyone. So we are. The next fact is really something very close to that. So we have this very cute little animal. It's called a hyrax. Okay? Hyrax. hyrax. Now, this hyrax is also commonly called as a rock rabbit. Alright. So this is also commonly called as a rock rabbit. And it's a very small furry animal that looks like that. Right. Kind of like a huge guinea pig. Okay. Yeah. It's found in some rocky areas. Fine. Cool. Now, who do you think it's most closely related to? This rodent here. Right. Or this huge elephant. What do you yes. think? I can see mouse, 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 mouse here. Yeah. For everybody who's giving comments to me, thank you so much. And if you feel that way, hit the like button on the video. Yes. Yes, everyone. Please make sure if, if you think that we are doing an amazing job over here. And if you think that we have an actress ma'am over here, please make sure you hit the like button. <laughs> Many of you are saying mouse. And few of them are saying elephant also. I like Gun Gun's comment. Ma'am, it looks like mouse. But I know that you'll think that's the obvious answer and I think it's elephant. Oh, nice. Very good. So I think, see, that's what we, that's what we love about this channel. And I think that's what you will agree to. Whenever we have come up with all of these sessions, right, um, that, you know, whenever we discuss about all of these, we always tell you to question yourself. Yeah. We always ask you to think about in a logical way and not the practical way. Question is something that you should ask, you should be keep on asking to yourself so that you can come to a good conclusion. Yes. 
So as you all know, right? So when you talk about this, in this case, as much as you will think that it looks resembles closer to the rodent, it's actually closer to the elephant. So now in this case, when we talk about this, right? Now the elephant that is there. Now what is common between a hyrax, which is also called as a rock rabbit, and what is common between an elephant? Yeah. Now the thing is, along with this, there's also another animal called a manatee. Yes. Manatee. So you can all go and you can have a look at it. Yes. Very cute animal, right? Manatee. Just very, very cute. So just go and check it out. You'll be surprised that you know they are they are very close enough. Yes. And the thing is, they all come from a common hooved ancestor. Okay. Yes. So they come from a common hooved ancestor. So their feet that are there, they're all very common. Even the fact their incisors that are there, right? Yeah. It's a little pointy, pointy. and sharp, kind of like, like the tusks. Also, yes. So all of these things are very common. So yeah. Interesting fact for you to go back and check. Yes. So now in this case, as we all know, this was about the hyrax, which is the closest relative to elephant. Yeah. Surprising, no ma'am. I mean, size. Yeah, look at the size. Yeah, so much size difference we have. But yeah, there are no issues. Yes. Okay. Fact number seven, everyone. Yes. Oh my God, someone is saying, my giraffe, my sister giraffe. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> I told my ma'am, you look weak. Thank you for the concern, but I'm not. I'm perfectly fine. It will take some time for us to recover. Yeah. <laughs> but both of us will be fine. Thank you so much for the concern, everyone. See, your love and your support is what keeps us going ahead. Yes, I was. Let's move ahead and we have oh this. See, I will not say anything about this fact because we did that. We yeah. have discussed this so many times, right, ma'am? Yes. How many of you know about the tardigrade? We all know about the tardigrade, right? How many of you don't know? Ma'am, elephant is an oversized rodent. You can't say that, okay? Elephant is not. Elephant is a very majestic animal, as a matter of fact, right? Yes, but very majestic animal. But rodent is not something we will refer to it. Yes. yes Saurabh I mean. sir, very popular demand. He'll come soon. <laughs> you met Saurabh sir yesterday, right? Yeah. He's here only. Many and of you are saying, ma'am. Uh, I know. They know. They know. They don't know. I know, but I like that. Like I like that comment. I know, but it's weird. <laughs> it's a bacteria, okay? It lives in eyebrows. I hear eyebrows. No, no, it's not like that, right? Fungus. See, it's a very old animal, right? Found way back millions and millions of years ago, right? And it was found in amber. It was actually found preserved. Yes. And it still survived. Actually. Tardigrade are one of those organisms which have the ability to survive extreme conditions, right? So they're known for their survival skills. Yeah, and a uh, lot of theories are there, you know, that you know, if we send them to uh, outer space, they'll still survive there also. Yeah. So yeah, interesting thing too for us, and because because of these conditions, right? Because of the the way that they can be in under high pressure under the water and very extreme temperatures. A lot of scientists are working on their body. They're trying to understand that how they can survive these extreme conditions. Yeah. So that if we can understand from there, and we can actually incorporate in upcoming years if we have to travel outside of planet Earth. So yes. It's super amazing, right? Exactly. So here it can, like somebody saying, it can survive lava too. Exactly. High temperatures. It can go without food for a long period of time. It can survive oceanic pressures also. So this right here is a very, very, you know, its survival skills are really good. And apparently, I did not know this, Shagun, but thank you for telling us if that's really true. Apparently, NASA has declared this the strongest animal. We were not aware about it. We'll yeah. surely check, but that's very interesting information. If it is, it's not here. giving word. <laughs> it is present in water, right? Yes. So, we you'll usually found them. Yes. And so, you can see how... See, you know, initially, if I, if I remember, I thought that it's a, actually a machine made by humans itself. So that they can actually travel and then do some research. But by looking at this mouth, it looks like a camera, right? And yeah. It has a camera. Look at the tiny legs, ma'am. Yeah. They're very small. See, they're not like... See, when you talk about the size of it, it's very, very tiny. Right? It's a very tiny organism. It's not one huge organism yeah. also. It's a very tiny organism. Okay. They're saying floating CCTV. <laughs> oh, yeah. Can. We can do that. Okay. Moving on. Oh, they're also calling it a vacuum <laughs> Oh, nice. It, that we never thought, but yeah. You guys are very creative. We now we are, we are very pr proud of you. Very proud of you. Okay. Very in demand, huh? We'll tell sir. Okay. We'll now, call him. But I think his sir has a session now, so unfortunately. Yeah. Actually, no. 
Yeah, yeah. Actually, no, right? So, we'll, I'll go aside. We'll yes. Call, yeah? So, now moving on to fact number eight, right? So, what is there in fact number eight? Now, we know about lizards, right? We all know lizards are called chipkalis, no ma'am? Yeah, chipkalis. Chipkalis. And now, ma'am only was telling someone may they'll all come out, right? Now, whenever we talk about this, I mean, have you all seen that sometimes lizard ka tail will get cut? Yes? Okay. Are planaria eggs? Planaria, yeah, but everybody's already good. 10 standard students would like, ma'am, ye to syllabus mein hai. This is not very fancy, right? Yes, ma'am, we know this. So we know that regeneration is a process wherein different parts or parts of the organism or in the case of planaria, like which the 10 standard students have learned and learned over and over. We know that regeneration is a process where a part of the body can be regenerated. That means it can be regrown. And this is because of certain specialized cells that are there. And we know that due to the presence of these specialized cells is why they are able to regrow it. Now, how many of you know about neurons right how many of you know about what are neurons can you all tell me very quickly yes yes starfish also has the ability to regenerate but before i go ahead right how many of you know about what are neurons this is very simple ma'am this is intense on syllabus ha huh, ha huh, it's there little extra Brain stuff cell. very good yeah they're the nerve cells right now did you know that if i take a neuron and if i take a skin cell right now, we know that cells have the ability to divide and make more of themselves, right? Now, the thing is, skin cells have this ability. But what about neurons? Do you think neurons have the ability to divide? Yes or no? Okay? Yes or no? In this case, neurons, will they divide or will they not divide? Yes or no? Very good, everyone. Please write your answers. Because in humans, we know that we don't not we don't see the repairment of the neurons in our body in humans body the growth and the regeneration and the repairment of the neurons is not there exactly which is why you have a f actually when you're born your number of neurons are fixed and they cannot further divide which is why any impairment to your nervous system any impairment to your neurons actually re relate to a lot of you know uh, you know, diseases like, for example, Alzheimer's and everything that is there, right? Neurological diseases are probably one among the many reasons is the fact that they are not able to, you know, regenerate. Yes? On your popular, popular demand, everyone, Saurav sir is here. He'll be coming just in a minute. But for the lizard wala part, you all know that, of course, they regenerate. And when I was sitting there, I don't know if you have... Now that we are in a world, now that we know that, I'm sure you would have watched a reel. A reel where they're just, the people are just making reels when they're, they're saying that now the chipkali season is back. Is it? Yeah, because you know, seen. they are just coming. The winter season is gone and the lizards are there because it's summer season. Yes. So yeah, that's a very... See, you know what? The science is everywhere. If you start looking around, you'll be able to see that. So, observe everyone. Yes. And finishing off my neuron point is the fact that starfishes can regenerate their neurons as well, which most organisms don't have the ability to. Yes. Because the thing is, in most organisms, we cannot regenerate their neurons, but starfishes have that ability. So that, along with ma'am said, is an extra point for all of you. Yes. Yes. Now, for now, fact number nine. We'll call us all of sir. Yes, to enlighten. On a, on a, on a very special level. You second fact, no? No, no. Second last fact. Yeah, second last fact. On a special demand, we called sir. I went outside the session and then we have invited him. So everybody, we need you all to clap and hit the like button. Yeah, everyone, please make sure you hit the like button. Sorry, sir is here. Hey, by the way, who called me when Lizard was, topic was on? <laughs> Many of them who called you when, when that time. Yeah. People came to me and said, Pata, tumko Lizard ke baat chale, tumko, tumko bula jara. <laughs> 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 chal raha, yaar. What is this? <laughs> hey, good afternoon, good evening, good evening. Yes. I'm good, I'm good. After so long, they're saying, yeah. After so... Yeah, I was like, Kali to mile the? Kali to mile the, yaar, log. They're having FOMO, not seeing you, I think. Don't worry. I thought biology facts were going on. Ha, physics, I mean, we had a question on ice. So we were like, ha, physics, we are bio teacher. I was about to comment when you were talking about tardigrade. No, you oh. were saying it's a very tiny organism. So I was about to write tiny and then use it. <laughs> <laughs> But then I stopped. <laughs> I'll come and then you But sir <laughs> has publicly announced it in a live class. So so the next one, actually the next fact is related to a little bit on electricity, sir. Uh -huh. So I think it's good that you are here. Oh, yeah. Nice. So did you know that our brain actually produces enough electricity to light a light bulb? Is it? Yeah. 
How many of you knew this? So how much electricity? Like for example, there are experiments where they keep it on apple and all. No. Yeah, potato mm-hmm. ka experiment we did. Ha, potato. Potato ka is fine. Yeah. Yes. Apple also they keep and they do this. But our brain also has the ability. So do you want to guess why? I mean, what I guess is all the, you know, commands that we get in our body. So because of electrical impulses, right? Change, yes. exchange of ions and everything. Yeah. I am I'm You're partially there. right. Yeah. I feel. <laughs> no, right. not partially. You're fully You're right. You're fully right. Yes. Yeah. Very good. Very Anna. good. Yeah! Everybody, lot of claps. I didn't know about this, by the way. <laughs> Inko lag hoga, ma'am ne bata ke bhi no, hey, actually, hey, hey, this hey. is the most unplanned thing that we have done today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, how much, uh, en- like, how much electricity would we need to power a light bulb? I think it depends on what kind of light bulb. Because the bulb right now we have on screen over here, it's an incandescent bulb. It's more like a 100 watt. Or ke liye to khair, we need a lot of electricity. Chotu sa bulb like that. Chotu bulb. Light light wala. LEDs are fine. I mean, because those uh, point, like one Daniel cell will give you about 0.9 volts of electricity. So around 3.6 volts you need at least this much potential difference you require. So let's see. Kisi ka hai khali dimag thoda. We can, we can, uh, you know. Try this on. Zero <laughs> bulb. These people will say it's easier to get mine because you know. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just came in the wrong foot. Huh? <laughs> so, hey, everybody. <laughs> Very easy, please. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, a lot of them are saying, sir, zero watt bulb, neon bulb. Zero watt, well, zero watt, hota nahi hai, by the way. It's Haan. just a thing we call it like zero watt bulb. That's n- nothing else, zero watt. What is this? Zero power. Was zero watt power, right? it's a ah. dim light mein yeah, like it's very less power, but nothing is like zero watt. We usually keep it in mandir. Like ah. in temples, we usually have that light. Raat mein Bhagwan so re. So then, humko current kyu nahi lagta? Hmm. Current aapko kyu lagta? Because like every command, you are able to raise your hand. You are able to do this thing because of you know all the <laughs> impulses going in your body. <laughs> So as sir actually guessed it right, we have electricity and apart from that we have chemical signals also. Yeah. And both of them are there and of course we have that enlightenment, right? Right ma'am, we can say enlightenment. Yes. <laughs> 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 tube light, tube light but it depends. Like we used to have jo pehle aati thi na, jo neon wali aati thi tube lights, the, the big ones, jo ki aise, jo, uh, action heroes, they used to come in movies with like boom, boom. That was 40 watts, by the way. Nowadays, we have LED tube lights, which is like less. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> Nay, they were saying you're a big fan. Oh, thank you. So now, of course, we will move on to the last fact. And I think, sir, you can help with this also. This is regarding functioning of ear and sound as well. Yeah. So yeah. a lot of physics. Yes, I listen a lot in this team. So yeah, <laughs> I can talk about this. Brain needs 0.05 seconds to recognize any sound. Hmm, the persistence of sound, huh? So you know, sounds are, sound is nothing but vibrations, right? And we are able to easily, uh, we are able to easily, you know, recognize the, I mean, we are able to easily perceive these vibrations, right? Because of the eardrum. And then of course, we have sensitive cells inside, which will convert the vibrational energy hmm. to chemical signals and then electrical signals, which is then sent to the brain. All of this which takes 0.05 seconds. So fast, nice. right? By the way, kids, this is not the persistence of sound, okay? That is something, how long a sound remains in your uh, ear or you can say it kind of remains in your brain. So this is about to recognize the sound. So don't do this, that when we do echo derivation, we don't take 0.05, that's 0.1, okay? Actually, so it remains in our mind yeah. for like... Haan, so basically, uh, Two sounds, distinctively, you can only uh, differentiate if, if there's a difference of around uh, 0.1 second. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yes. So, of course, with this, everybody, we are done. We had 10 facts, out of which last two were all related to electricity and sound. And we had a special with Saurabh Sir. And on popular demand, we called you him also. I feel like whenever we do these generic sessions, they, after some they're like, I'm called Saurabh Sir. <laughs> yeah. For on popular demand. And, I, okay, there's one thing that we have to address. Tanishq on 9th and 10th. See, don't worry. See, what is past is past. Don't worry about your marks, right? I think uh, you have been, you know, you have been writing this comment for a long time. Really sorry we took it now because we were just thinking that, you know, we'll end the session and then we'll address it. But don't worry. It's just the marks, just the examination. Keep on hard working. You will see amazing results. It's just the one examination you might not get good marks that you were thinking. You, will, you might not get 80 out of 80. But you will have good marks, so don't worry about it. Yes. yes. 
and everybody don't see we come up with these classes only because we know that you have a lot of you know sometimes jam packed schedule yes. whether it's in 6 to 8 or 9 and 10 you know your like with exams and everything is very jam packed so we try to keep it light so that with everything there's always an academic outcome you always learn new things with us but at the same time you can also relax back laugh a little and after just watching 45 minutes of a class, you've learned something new. Yes. And now, yes. this information you can actually share with your friends. Spread the knowledge, everyone, so that you will remember this information for a longer duration. Like how Saurabh sir says, you can show off wherever you want to go. Yeah. Like I mean, it's okay. Yeah. See, this is not just for class 10 students. Wherever, whatever class you are, no, it, it, you always feel a little setback. Number is not good. I'm getting these kind of thoughts. Mommy is saying something, Papa is saying something, Dose is saying It's okay. See, I think that's the time where I think you should have a little bit of thick skin. Yes, bro, you've come. What are you going to do? Tell me. Right? We'll see the next time. What are you doing? Class 10 is not the end of the world, I'm telling you. How many people have been with me who have passed in class 10 and passed in class 10? We're doing a good job and we feel kind of good. It's so bad for me. So these kind of things happen. You don't know about life. You think that today is over. But you know what? Coming years, whatever you want to do, just focus on that. Everything else is just noise here. Relax. Kuchni or abhi. Life adam ni ori. Okay? Chill marne ka adam. Yes, everyone. And as we all say, right, ma'am? We, we have got, got you covered. It's like me. We have got you covered. So, with this, everyone, we'll end our session. Please make sure 6, 7th, and 8th graders, Ashwara, ma'am, have another session with you guys at, 7, at sorry, 6 p.m. Right? <laughs> few minutes after that. And please make sure you join that session, right? The yes. law and trust you, right? It's a menti quiz and you have all the subjects, especially for 7th graders. And I'll also join. Yes. With my original name. Yes. Original I'll also name. compete. Yeah, with my name, Ankita. Oh, okay. Uh, ma but ma'am, please do tell me all the answers. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody with this, we'll be signing off. We will see you all soon. Up until then, take care. Lots of love and bye-bye. Yes. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. And keep on.